Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to import tiled maps into Godot 4 as tile map layers so that you can use them inside of your actual Godot game. So I'm going to be linking this GitHub page, which has some sample maps we can use for this tutorial. And we're also going to need an importer. So uh, yet, yet another tiled importer for Godot 4 is uh, what we're going to be using. Now you can find this in the asset library, but uh, we specifically are going to want the latest version. So that's 2.1.10 and this targets Godot 4.3 or higher. Tile map layers were introduced in 4.3. So that's probably what we want to be working with since that replaces the old regular tile map node. As you can see, there's a GD script and a C sharp version. Uh, if you don't want to have to compile your code at all and you prefer to just use GD script like I tend to, then you can just grab the GD script version. Okay, so here's the contents of the zip file. You can see this add-ons folder. Generally, plugins go in add-ons, so that's helpful right there. And then here on the right, we have the Godot project. Uh, you generally know it's the root because you can see the project.godot and the icon.svg there. We just want to bring in the add-ons folder straight to this root. So the full path of the add-on is going to be add-ons and then Yeti. And then back in Godot, we can go to project project settings and the github page recommends that in the import settings so if we type import there file system import actually editor import that you can turn off use multiple threads so in some cases when it's importing the tile maps if you're using multi-threading then it can crash the program which is probably not what we want so we'll take that recommendation and just have use multi-threads turned off so this is only for the editor importer so this setting should only apply in the editor when you're importing files. Nothing to do with the game itself. So let's close that. Okay, and then we need our tile maps. So on the tiled maps page, you can just download the zip. Okay, open that up. So we have tiled maps master, and then here we have our sample maps. So you can put those uh, kind of wherever you want in your project. I would probably create a directory to contain them all, something like art or maps. So I'll just go with maps. That's a little more specific here. Create that, grab all the files, and we'll just bring them all in. Okay, so about the importer, I want to point out that um, the magical land dizzy tiles dot gif it's not going to import properly so the importer works with pngs so if you wanted to use this one i imagine you'd have to convert it to a png and do some editing on that magic land map but the other ones should work just fine as long as you include the dot uh, tmx tiled file and the pngs that's what it needs in order to import so we go back into Godot and we can see our pngs there it's not showing the tmx files yet because we have to reboot the project uh, before we do that, let me double check in project settings that the plugin is enabled. So we'll enable that right now. I guess if you enable the plugin second, then uh, it'll import as soon as it loads. So we don't have to actually reboot. So now let's create a little world scene that's going to contain our tile map. So I'll create a 2D scene. I'll rename this to be world. And then we need to bring in one of our imported TMX files into this. Uh, you can double click on them and open them up like this and then open anyway. Uh, you can see it can't be modified because it was automatically imported, but you can put them in a new scene. So like for instance, here we have this map. So if we want to use that inside of our world scene, we just uh, kind of drag this over to the world and position it in the hierarchy. And then we have our tile map layer there. Okay, and if we scroll down, it should have basically all of the tiles put in properly. And you can see it automatically creates the tile set resource for us. Right, let's go ahead and save the world scene real quick. So the importer works with layers, objects, tile collisions, tile animations, and a bunch more. Custodies can also be handy too. Sometimes you might need that. So it's going to have some good compatibility. Okay, now I want to show how we can get the uh, physics collisions from the tile set onto the tile map. So I believe if we go over to our main imported resource, we're going to check the tile map. And I'm not going to make any changes here, but just to show that it probably doesn't have the physics yet, we'll go to tile set paint. So if we check in here, there's no physics layer data. Uh, we could add that ourselves as normal inside of Godot by creating a physics layer over here and then painting um, the physics layers on our squares. So like we could do this and then we don't need to worry about setting it all up inside of the tiled program. But the point is to get as much data from tiled into Godot so that uh, we don't have to manually edit in Godot. But 
obviously the option exists there. So uh, let's show how we would create those same physics layer uh, collision shapes inside of tiled. So I'm going to close uh, this map. I'm going to not save. OK, so there's not going to be any collisions currently. Let's right click on the tiled map and I'm going to go to show and file manager. OK, now we want to open one of these up for editing. I think we just have to double click the TMX. OK, so here's the tiled editor. Probably going to look kind of similar. So we want some of these tiles to actually have uh, physics collisions. So we have our tile set here. I'm going to zoom in control middle mouse wheel. And then you want to click on this edit tile set button. So in this window, you're going to see the tile collision editor over here on the right. We want to select the tile we want to add collision to. So I'll just select one of these wall tiles. OK, and now we want to insert a rectangle collision. Uh, makes sense. Nice and simple for this rectangle tile. So I'm going to click here and then I believe we wanted control and shift left click on a corner and then drag it to the bottom right corner. And that's going to create a perfect square shape around our uh, tile and then let go. OK, and now we have that collision shape. So we want to take this collision shape and now we want to control C, copy it, click on the next tile and then control shift V paste it in, which is going to put it in the same spot, snapped to all the corners. Uh, so that's going to make it easy for us here. Then we can go to the next tile, control V paste it in, and just kind of keep doing that with all the tiles that should have the collision shape. So I won't do every single one here, but I'll do a few. And if you have something kind of different, like this one over here, which maybe you don't want this airspace to have that collision, then you can also work with a polygon here. Should be able to, so we'll try that. I'll do control shift, click on the corner, snap it over here, go to the middle and we can make it a little bit more complicated if we need to, or we could just go kind of down like this. So con still holding control shift, by the way, and then left click, left click, left click. So it's not a perfect collision shape, but I mean, it'll do the job for right now. And we want to save our tile set. So control S and I'm going to also hit escape. So it's out of the creation mode there go to the tile map and save that as well, just in case. Okay, now we go back into Godot and we'll see if that automatically imported. So I will open the .tmx scene. Let's see here. I'll go to tile set at the bottom. We want to paint physics layer. And you can see that all of the uh, collision shapes I just created in tiled editor have now been imported into Godot, including notably the polygon shape over here which um, kind of cut out this corner from the collision shape itself. So now we have the collisions importing into the tiled map as well. So we don't have to manually customize it inside of Godot. If we prefer to just do everything through tiled, that's there. So to see the collision shapes inside the game world, I'll go enable debug for visible collision shapes. Let's uh, try running the scene. I'll select current so it runs this one. OK, when you go to run, if you do get an error saying something like TMX can't be imported, just reboot your project. I had to do that real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and run the scene. And yeah, I think we're seeing the collision shapes there as well. It would be helpful if we had a camera to zoom in. It's kind of zoomed out right now. So I'll just add a child node, a camera 2D. Let's hit W to move it. I'll position it over here. And let's increase the zoom on the right and the inspector to, let's say, three. OK, so now if we run this scene, it's going to be much more obvious that we could see the visible collision shapes here and there. So our data is importing from the tile map editor as well. So the same kind of thing would also apply if we want stuff like custom uh, data layers. So we can add custom data on the tiled editor. So let's see if we go to the tile set and we click on a tile. Let's say we're working on this tile right here. Let's add a property and I will say, and this can be a bunch of different data types. Um, we'll go with string here. So that's just a text property. And I'll just give it something. I'll call it is air platform. Okay, and this was actually a string. I think it would make a lot more sense for that to be a Boolean. Um, so this would be if we want to assign this name to something else. I'll remove that and let's add in a Boolean. So a true false value is air platform. Okay, and now we just have a checkbox. So yes or no, is this a platform in the air? Kind of looks like it to me. So I'll check that. Let's save this, go back to Godot 
and reload, it's going to bring in that tile set data uh, into the tile map, custom data layers, or it should be there. Let me zoom in on the tile and we'll see if it actually has it. So paint, maybe we have to reload the project. Let me do that. So we're gonna jump into the inherited scene. Okay, so I'm gonna click here. We'll look at the tile map, custom data layers. Okay, so we have to save the tile set. I'll save the map just in case too. Let's see, if we click on here, we can still see the is air platform property is set there. Okay, and then we wanna go back in here. We'll check the tile set. Does it have the custom data layer? Okay, so if we go back into Godot and we look at our tile map, we won't see it in custom data layers, but uh, you can access that data if we click on this tile. Oh, we have to be in tile set. So click on the tile and you'll actually see it under metadata. So generally these kind of values I would put in uh, custom data layers if I was doing everything from Godot, but we should be able to grab the metadata as well by just putting in the string name and getting the value from it. Okay, so for this metadata, I believe you can just get meta from any object in Godot. So lastly, just to show one way you can access that metadata in order to use it within your script. Um, any Godot object, which a tile data or the data of a singular tile on your tile map is an object, you can call the has meta or let's see, this should be also a get meta if you need to get the value of it, um, just like you are accessing. If you need to get the value of it based on the string and you can give it a default value when it doesn't have it, um, then you can use that in order to access that data that the tile map has. So where we're set custom properties is air property that gets turned into that metadata that any object can have assigned to it. So when we run this script, the 18 tiles that actually have that value set are gonna be totaled and then printed out with this little message that shows how many of the tiles have that metadata assigned. So just looping through all of the squares and then counting the ones that have it. And if we look at the tile map, we can kind of see that there is, well, there should be 18 of these little edge pieces through all of these platforms. So like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it looks like about 18. Um, so like when we run the script, that is just gonna run on ready. So it's counting for us how many of those tiles have that property set. And then if we wanna get the property, uh, well, we could just also say print debug, or just maybe prints for right now. Tile found with is air platform, tile found with is air platform value Okay, so with this print message, we can actually see what the value is. So uh, let's get that value, tile data dot get meta, and that is going to be is air platform. So this should basically say true 18 times because we only set true on that one tile. None of the other ones have a false value. And you wouldn't have to necessarily, um, you know, set that property to false on every single one. You could just have a default false. And then that would be a little easier if it's only going to be a few tiles that are actually air platforms, so to speak. So um, just keep that kind of thing in mind. So let's go ahead and run this and we should see like 18 print messages. We can see that the value is all true. So we can use that for our actual game logic. And yeah, that's pretty much it for collision shapes, uh, getting custom tile data and importing the maps themselves from tiled into Godot. So I'll put these links in the description. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope this video was helpful for anyone who needed it. And I will see you guys hopefully in, and I will see you guys in my future videos, hopefully much sooner. And I will see you guys in my future videos.